ಶಾಂತಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಝೋನ್ ದಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ uh we once again thank all of you for joining this class because uh, this class we are going to be taking the whole 6000 sutras of artha shastra chapter by chapter in every class and uh, we have been doing that consistently for me it's a very strange feeling because i'm actually speaking to a screen because i'm used to a physical class and post corona i think most of us have got used to this kind of it learning but at the same time it's a good reflection in sanskrit we call it manan reflection thinking about what chanakya would have been what his thoughts have been so friends in last class we uh, so i would say we saw about anvikshiki sthapana going back to the previous class uh, we have started understanding the artha shastra from a holistic perspective we saw that you know this greatest treatise that has been discovered by shama shastri is not just ancient but the principles are also eternal not just ancient but also eternal so we are trying to understand the artha shastra in its original format trying to understand uh, a little bit of a sanskrit and of course lots of application in our generation uh right now we are in the first book of artha shastra where we are looking at the various topics he has covered and uh, this is right now what we call the training of a king you know leadership is a main subject for chanakya and is training up the leaders of the future of course he wrote it for chandragupta maurya but for us it's also relevant and last class if you recollect we thought about what is the kind of a subjects that a leader should know there were four subjects that were discussed anvikshiki trai varta danda niti cheti vidyaha very simple four things have to be learned anvikshiki trai varta and danda niti and then we got into what is called debates with the purva acharyas you must have recollected that you know every acharya brings his view and there were lot of you know previous teachers of artha shastra so when we look at one school of thought manavaha they say no no not four is not required cut down one anvikshiki is not required trai varta danda niti then we come uh, brahaspati they say no cut down one more and one more is jata anvikshiki trai is not required a varta and dandaniti is enough then comes uh, ushana they say no no only dandaniti teach only political science and uh, then we see this what happens politicians learn political science but unfortunately they don't have the grounding of the previous three knowledges chanakya comes back and say wait all the four are required but the first important foundations is anvikshiki we saw what is anvikshiki in the last class uh, it is a uh, uh, ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಯೋಗ ಲೋಕಾಯತ ದ ಕಾಂಬಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ತ್ರೀಸ್ ಅನ್ವೀಕ್ಷಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಈ ಗೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ವ್ಯೂ ವೈ ಅನ್ವೀಕ್ಷಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರದೀಪ ಸರ್ವ ವಿದ್ಯಾನ ಉಪಾಯ ಸರ್ವ ಕರ್ಮನ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅನ್ವೀಕ್ಷಿ ದ ರೈಟ್ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೀಡರ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಅನ್ವೀಕ್ಷಿ chanakya after all the debates and discussions which is generally called as shastra artha he comes to the conclusion that all the four are required and in every chapter he will explain the importance in detail so in the last class we saw anvikshiki sthapana so anvikshi trai varta and dandaniti so what is the next uh, topic that's going to be covered in today's chapter anvikshi now comes trai what is trai we'll see in today's class my request to all of you is that please start making lots of notes because in this particular chapter you will come to know the whole culture of india yes even though it will be a short class with some discussions 
this is a great subject to be explored independently because many of us don't even know our culture oh what is india's culture oh india's culture is you know family values of course that's only one part of it some people say oh india's culture is food culture some people say india's culture is spiritual culture all of them are right but it's like looking at that elephant by five, four blind men you know somebody says elephant is like a pillar because only touch the you know the feet of the elephant and he says that the whole elephant some person looks at uh, probably you know touches the tail of the elephant oh the elephant is like a broom partly correct so everybody has got different views somebody touches the uh, you know the trunk of the elephant and he says oh it's like this so many of us have different understandings about our great indian culture but in this particular chapter we'll see what exactly is indian culture and why it is important for everybody to know the culture of the place otherwise you'll never be a great leader you know even in the corporate world today we're talking about a great organization having a great culture you know leaders have to understand cultures and leaders have to create a culture it's a two sided coin so if you're already in a company which was started by somebody else you have to understand the culture a lot of people think that you know in the organizations that we work productivity is very important of course productivity is important but to be productive to be efficient you need to understand the culture of the organization and once you understand the culture you can be very productive and efficient otherwise also true you know if you are already in a culture you have to improve the culture you don't think that you know i got a culture i don't do anything understanding and improving if you look at a company like tatas i'm sure many of you know that organization directly or indirectly and i'm very fortunate to work very closely with lot of indian companies and foreign companies also but if you look at the great tata culture oh it's a culture it's not just a company i know people who started with tata and only retired with tata because they say you know everything is fine i like the culture the kind of a situation the vibes of this place you know this is new term people use i like the vibes of my company what is this vibes it is not something tangible but you can feel it so right in our great indian culture or i would even say indian civilization there is some vibes there is some culture if you don't understand it you never be a great leader so this cultural aspect is covered but remember it's thapana you are getting established in what is called the great culture before you become a great leader so the first class we saw about how anvikshiki was important to be established that's done and now we go to the next one before i start about this class about tray anvikshiki is over tray you know let me ask you this question and you can type in the chat box which is the holy book of hindus you know if i were to ask you this question because every particular uh, i would say culture religion civilization will have a book to refer to okay varun says yeah it's bhagavad gita oh it says is vedas bhagavad gita d b g bhagavad gita bhagavad gita there isn't one yeah okay we have a library bhagavad gita rama and vedas yeah now here is some clarification that is required all of you are right yet yet you have to understand the difference between the kind of uh, comparative religious study just for comparison okay in india there's so much of documents available ramayana mahabharata bhagavad gita there's also shrimad bhagavatam yet remember one thing how this word holy gita came in. so there's a small story i like to share it so happened that this was during the freedom struggle you know a uh, lot of uh, i would say the western and the Middle East philosophies came to India. You know the Christian uh, kind of a philosophical, theological thoughts came to India. The Islamic thoughts came to India, and of course we have our own uh, Indian culture. Also, we have our own culture. So when the real religious book studies were happening, the Bible was a very important part. Quran was a very important part, and of course the Jewish books also came to India. and that particular time you know we realized one thing our academic community our scholarly community which we also call the panditya community the pandits they were asked asked this question okay we have a holy book okay it could be quran it could be bible it could be any other religion that you bring from the outside world which is your book which is your book 
and therefore the discussion happened and he said we don't have one book because everybody studies differently somebody is a follower of shiva so say shiva puran is our holy book somebody is a vaishnavite somebody follows devi marga somebody follows hanuman so he said my holy book is hanuman chalisa accepted so you know swami chinmayanand ji was responsible for giving this one name it so happened that you know when he was asked saying that okay welcome to hinduism we don't have one book we have a whole library but that answer was not enough please understand that answer was not enough when you discuss something you have to somewhere conclude okay where do i start from okay you may have a library but i don't have the time to understand the whole library so where do i start from and that time if you recollect a few years ago the holy bible was very popular in fact the holy bible was available in every five star hotels room also so the missionary said you know this is the book to be taught and i would suggest all of you should read the books of other religions also i would say you know never become fanatic please read i have your own understanding maybe you have to study the bible or the quran or many other books you should but the problem is that what's your book so you know remember last class i also told a intelligent person will have the question very clear the question that was asked is what is india's or indian civilization or cultures book so you can't say the library sorry that's not the answer and because bible was getting very popular swami chinmayanand ji concluded with one name saying that if you have the holy bible we have the holy geeta that's how geeta became very popular because if you look at you know keep only one book from the library and i can't say you know i'll give 10000 books sorry let's start with one and explore many so one to start with so that time swami chinmayanand said you know we, we don't have one book we have a whole library but to start with let's start with bhagavad gita because it's got some essence of the whole civilization so that's how it became bhagavad gita but let me go back and say bhagavad gita was just for that conclusion of that question in fact swami chinmayanand ji was known as a gita acharya he made bhagavad gita so popular he used to give lectures in open grounds in schools and colleges that's why today at least study one book called bhagavad gita at least if you can study multiple like upanishads and ramayana mahabharata fine but let me tell you what is the book of indian civilization indian philosophy those are the vedas yes it's very important no our one book we don't have one book that's the right answer begin with bhagavad gita but what's the right answer the vedas if you study the vedas a huge compilation and if you understand this you will be surprised that you will understand indian civilization and let me tell you the beautiful part is that we have lot of people who understood the vedas and given their own viewpoints and commentaries so the holy book of the hindus is many you can be you decide what you want but actually the base of indian civilization is the vedas that's why before we use this word hindu culture it is called as the vedic culture is very important distinction So, okay i am a hindu i am proud everybody is proud i am a, i am a muslim i am proud fine but i have a book to refer to i am a christian i have a book i am a sikh i am a jain so jains have agamas the sikhs have guru granth sahib all this put together in fact all indian religions buddhism jainism everything has got some inputs from the basic book called the vedas and in some scriptures at one point of time the vedas were also called as agamas there are different names for vedas what is vedas we will see today in our class and chanakya is very very clear that if you don't understand your vedic culture you will not understand indian culture now please make lots of notes because i can't cover the whole vedic philosophy in one class i'll try to touch upon what chanakya touched upon but a leader who doesn't understand vedas can never understand his own leadership style and what to do after becoming a leader So today's class, we are going to cover up the next chapter, which is three. We saw Anvikshi, and we we'll start with three. So I'll read the Sanskrit one, and then we'll go to English.
am i audible me now okay so as the english yes, sir. yeah so what i'm going to do even if you don't put on the screen and if you don't have the copy also fine i'll just read it in sanskrit <clears throat> and then we'll go to english this is technically the chapter number 3 of the first book prathamam prakaranam vidya samuddeshah tatra trai sthapana we saw anvikshi sthapana now we are going to trai sthapana what is trai sthapana i'll read this sama rig yajurva veda straya strai atharva veda ti sahasa vedocha vedaha shiksha kalpa vyakarana niruktam chando vi ज्योति दो ज्योतिष तस्म इति छंदांगी इत वेदांगी छंदांगी एष त्रय धर्मास्तु तुर्नो वर्ण नामाश्रमाणम च स्वधर्म स्थापना दौपकदीकह स्वधर्मो ब्राह्मणस्य ध्यायन मध्यपानम यजनम याजनम दानम प्रति क्षत्रियस्थ्यान वैश्यन दान कृषि पशुपालने वाणिज्य च शूद्रस द्विजाति शुश्रूषा वार्ता कारुकृषि नव कर्म च गृहस्थ स्वधर्म जीव वस्तु स्वरसमृतम देवपुत्रीति पृथ्वीषु त्याग शेष भोजन च बृहस्चारिण ब्रह्मचारिण स्वध्या गृहकार्यक्षवाचार्यो प्राणत्की वृत्ति सद भाव गुरुपुत्रे सृहचारिणी चनप्रस्थ से ब्रह्मचार्य भूम य धारण मार्गी हो अग्निहोत्र देवता पित्र ती पूजा वन्य परिव्राजको धर्म क्रमे दुष्चे तस्मात्मोताक्षिदी विनयादिकारिके प्रथमोदिकरणे विद्या समुदेश स्थापना तृतीय त्रयी स्थापना तृतीय इज द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर्मेट ऑफ यू नो कंक्लूडिंग एनी चैप्टर वी सी दैट इन भगवत गीता आल्सो इति श्रीमद् भगवत गीता उपनिषत्सो ब्रह्म विद्या योग शास्त्रे श्री कृष्णार्जुन संवाद पंचदशोध्याय पुरुषोत्तम योगो नाम so when we conclude also we are very clear what did we talk so till now we have covered this particular chapter what is called trai sthapana so we go to english one 
ఎనిథింగ్ it could be a kind of a television or a fridge or a mobile also you know what they do is that the manufacturer will also give you an operational manual what is an operational manual how to put it on how to operate whom do you call when you have a challenge so it gives you all the sop standard operating process now for every instrument created every instrument that is created there is some manual that the manufacturer tells you this is how you should operate what about human beings okay what about human beings you know human beings actually have been given the vedas you know so what's your life what's the objective of your life what is to be done everything is dead when to eat when to sleep when to do exercise imagine everything about human life to that extent of you'll be surprised it's also when to brush the teeth you'll be surprised that's the kind of detailing we have everything is documented but the thing is that it's all scattered all around and the best part is that suppose you have one mobile okay and later on it gets upgraded so we have version 1 mobile version 2 so apart from the old instruction you have new instructions so every generation we start adding up more and more kind of information and instructions now the thing is that indian culture is so dynamic and evolving that the original vedas were not documented they were oral traditions so they were passed on from generation to generation orally and new new things got added up it is said that you know the vedas at one particular point of time had more than 10 lakh you know instructions 10 lakh some people say even 100 lakhs i don't know but what happened is that human beings cannot remember so much the memory got reduced so today we don't even know what is memory everything is google so type to google it will store all your memories artificial intelligence but in the vedic culture everything was passed on verbally then came a very interesting person called as veda vyasa so krishna dwaipana vyasa as we call him also he came and he said okay human beings should not lose all the knowledge so let me come down and classify all this knowledge of the world right from mathematics to physics to food sciences everything that you can think about astrology astronomy everything let me document it it is said that veda vyasa actually saw the destruction of the human race because he was a generation where mahabharata happened and you see the mahabharata was kind of a uh, family war and i said what is happening and by the way veda vyasa was also part of the family and he said sunta nahi bachche log imagine a grandfather with so much wisdom but nobody listens to you so that was a kind of a pain and it seems that veda vyasa went to his gurus during those times and said oh look at this man ko bolta hu i am telling them listen listen this is not how human race is power politics fighting against each other for what human life is not meant for all these things only we are supposed to reach the ultimate moksha nirvana enlightenment but what are you doing so he was very upset imagine you created a wealth of knowledge and nobody values it it's a very big pain and vedyas was very upset so he went to his guru and said don't worry even if they don't listen to you please document it because if these people don't listen to you the children will at least know your knowledge because you are limited but knowledge cannot be limited so if they don't listen to you document it that is the first time in human history that ved vyas sat down and compiled the vedas that's why he is also called as the editor of the vedas vyasa means editor so the one who edits edited the vedas and what it down the format that is given to us okay it's like creating a ready reference manual okay so he created the vedas for all of us who don't have memory skill we require books and today the book reading has also stopped chanting memory skill is gone so now we look at google 
nothing wrong at least it is there so what did veda vyasa do what is contribution so he document all the knowledge in the world that is available for us and that's why he is called veda vyasa and how many of us are aware of it that in indian culture irrespective of which community or region you come we have a common festival oh we have diwali no diwali is not a common festival it is celebrated across india except kerala are aware of it kerala is a interesting state that you know festivals like we celebrate all devis and ram janmabhoomi to all you know everything is celebrated there are common cultures but one festival that is celebrated across india irrespective of which language custom culture you follow is guru purnima and that guru purnima is the birthday of ved vyas he is called as adi guru let me tell you there were gurus even before ved vyas but he did a contribution which is amazing he authored or i would say classified and documented the knowledge which is available in a book format so if you look at any picture of mahabharat you know visual you will see ved vyas are writing something he will say he wrote the mahabharat with the help of ganapati or ganesha that's true but he wrote many things he wrote the mahabharata he wrote the shrimat uh, bhagavata puran he wrote all puranas 18 puranas and remember bhagavad gita is part of mahabharat but the biggest contribution is compiling the vedas and that's why he so much celebrated you know he's called the adi guru all gurus follow him and there is a statement saying that you know anything in this world anything in the world past present future is covered by ved vyas baki sab jhootan hai unka it's like he has eaten all the knowledge what have we consume it's only a part of that so ved vyas such a mighty intellect and the best part about ved vyas is his intellect was so growing namaste vyas vishal buddhe kullara vindrayata patra net vyas vyas also means expansive imagine so much knowledge in our culture so much so much that i'll tell you we should be proud of indians not as a patriot but as a culture which believed in knowledge is limitless and ever expanding so there is a new subject artificial intelligence machine learning robotics we we we'll love it we'll study it so we'll study new but we'll not forget old and knowledge cannot be limited and this vedyasa did it and that's why we call him an adi guru so amazing contribution now coming back to artha shastra artha shastra is covered in the mahabharata by vedyas yes so don't think that you know that artha shastra kautilya only so bolte na guru ke guru ke guru ke guru hai so he's like amazing person so from next year onwards or maybe from this year onwards when are your guru purnima okay even if you are busy try to do some small activity around guru purnima remember this great person called ved vyas who is responsible for indian culture and civilization documented for generations to come unfortunately we don't even know and many of us don't even practice it but at least start take the first step so now we understood anvikshiki now we are coming to what is called trai what is trai we'll see here we have so i'll start reading the english one establishing now the king is trained remember he is still getting trained andikshi how to think sankhya yoga loka yata all done wait just because you are a thinker doesn't mean you know everything lot of people have this funny notion i know how to think how to think is one thing what to think about and if you are thinking is right or wrong how do you verify it so we go back to what is called the vedas so chapter 3 section 1 which is continued remember andikshi trai vartha so next chapter will be vartha and then then it chanakya says to study all the four establishing the necessity of the vedic law very necessary to understand the vedic culture the vedic law okay what is the vedas here it is called trai trai means three sama the rigveda the sama veda the rigveda and the yajur veda these three are the three vedas many people may ask okay but i heard that you know there is one more veda there are four vedas one of them is called atharva veda you are right actually it was classified as three sama veda so rigveda samveda and yajurveda atharva veda was there but it's it, it was classified separately later on therefore the next line these three the atharva veda and the itihasa are the vedas 
ఆర్ ద వేదాస్ ఫస్ట్ త్రీ రిగ్ సారీ సామ రిగ్ అండ్ యజు దీస్ త్రీ వేదాస్ అండ్ దెన్ వి హ్యావ్ ద అథర్వ వేద అలాంగ్ విత్ ఇతిహాస వేద వాట్ ఈస్ ఇతిహాస వేద రామాయణ అండ్ మహాభారత్ ఇన్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ మెనీ పీపుల్ స్కాలర్స్ కాల్ రామాయణ అండ్ మహాభారత్ యాజ్ పంచమ వేద ఫిఫ్త్ వేద సో మహాభారత్ అండ్ రిమంబర్ అగైన్ ఐమ్ గోయింగ్ టు పాయింట్ దిస్ అవుట్ రామాయణ ఇస్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ మహాభారత్ సో వీ హ్యావ్ ఎ కంప్లీట్ మహాభారత్ సెపరేట్ డివి వాల్మీకి రామాయణ కంబ రామాయణ తులసి రామాయణ బట్ ఆర్ వి అవేర్ దట్ మహాభారత ఇన్క్లూడ్స్ రామాయణ లెట్ మీ గివ్ అన్ ఇన్స్టెన్స్ యు నో దర్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ కామన్ క్యారెక్టర్స్ ఇన్ రామాయణ అండ్ మహాభారత్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ కామన్ క్యారెక్టర్స్ అండ్ దే ఆర్ ఇంటర్ కనెక్టెడ్ one of the most common linking common linking between rama and mahabharat is hanuman hanuman is very popular in rama and everybody knows it but remember in the mahabharat also is there he is you know old at that particular time and he meets his own brother vayuputra called bhima there is a small incident where he meets bhima and then he says i'll be with you brothers so okay, i'll support you and therefore in mahabharat if you look at the arjuna's pataka the flag in the chariot it's got hanuman you seen that so if you think that ramayana is a separate book it is right but to say that ramayana and mahabharat are not connected is wrong so they are interconnected so coming back all these four vedas we will look at it rigveda samveda yajurveda atharva ved along with itihasa veda is to be studied oh my goodness రాజా పడాయి కభి బాత్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్స్ టు వర్క్ బట్ ఈ సేస్ హీల్ బి టాట్ దీస్ త్రై అండ్ ద టూ దీస్ ఆర్ ద వేదాస్ సో రిమంబర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ హ్యావ్ టు స్టడీ ఇట్స్ హ్యూజ్ బట్ యూ డోంట్ వరీ అబౌట్ ద సైజ్ అండ్ ద లెంత్ స్టార్ట్ యాజ్ రామకృష్ణ పరమహంస ద గురు ఆఫ్ స్వామి వివేకానంద సెట్ టేక్ వన్ స్టెప్ టువర్డ్స్ గాడ్ గాడ్ విల్ టేక్ టెన్ స్టెప్స్ టువర్డ్స్ యూ i am sure many of you must have thought of 6000 sutras of arthashastra to be studied online the first question i think meena jayesh pranav all my team kartika riya were getting how many months will it happen you know how many classes because people are looking at knowledge as a time bound thing no knowledge is not time bound of course you'll have number of classes 7:30 to 9 pm all this is fine but take the first step i'm still surprised i was discussing with my team oh people are still attending i thought you know 10 25 people will remain today also we got 100 plus and people are watching on youtube i know don't worry about the length worry that you're not taking the first step i'll repeat it don't worry how much time will it take to read all the indian culture civilization vedas oh you are saying you know 10 lakh 100 lakh don't worry start somewhere they are all interconnected so you start arthashastra that's also a great starting point but don't end after this class is over so that's why i'm telling you make a lot of notes so maybe you can google separately about you know how to study the vedas and there are lot of gurukuls even today teaching the vedas in a pure format so start somewhere so the king is given given the king to be made is given this particular you know assignment to study the vedas so what are the vedas very clear the samved rigved and yajurved these three are the three vedas called trai okay but says along with these we have the atharva veda and itihasa veda ramayan mahabharat my guru swami tejnavan used to tell you know if you want to study indian culture some tips for all of you just study three books he said uh, shri ram or uh, shri ram or oh, ramayan no no shri plus r plus m what is shri plus r plus m shrimad bhagavatam not bhagavad gita okay bhagavatam shri r for ramayan and m for mahabharat why does he tell that because he says you know they are all story formats the shrimad bhagavatam is all krishna leela the dasha avatars come there so study that one book you will have all the understanding of every temple you will go to you will find all the sculptures around shrimad bhagavatam the dasha avatars what are they so one r ramayan now of course it's getting more popular after the pran pratishtha but study ramayana independently in fact ramayana is such a wonderful book that's a very dna of indian culture of course it starts with valmiki and ramayana but there are hundreds and hundreds of ramayana 
In fact, many people may not even know there is a Muslim Rama. Yeah. So don't just make it a religious book. And when you say Mariyada Purushottam Ramayana, Ramayan, Ram, sorry, Mariyada Purushottam Ram, it's a different level of being an ideal human being. Mariyada Purushottam Uttam Ram. So how to be an ideal person, an ideal king, an ideal friend. In fact, one commentator said, how to be an ideal enemy also, Ramayana teaches. How to be an ideal father, husband, there can be a lot of debates because Sita ko chhod diya, all this can be done. Sita never had a problem. We have a problem. So you can study debate, but Ramayana is a great book to be studied. The Sri Rama Mahabharat. I've been very, very fortunate, you know, the God's grace that I studied the whole Mahabharata one lakh shlokas. So start with one, but don't end with one. Because so you have started with this book. Great. Some of you must have started this in your own traditional parampara. Like for example, in Maharashtra, we have this great sampradaya called the Varkaris. They start by studying Jnaneshwari of, of uh, Jnaneshwar Maharaj, a great saint. They study in the local Marathi language, Jnaneshwari. But that's Bhagavad Gita. Some people start like that. Some people start with a basic Hanuman Chalisa. That's also fine. In South India, Tirukural, Tamil Nadu, it's very popular. Some people start with Vishnu Sahasranama. Some people start with Lilta Sahasranama. Wherever you start, please continue your tradition. Because that's the family that you're born with certain customs and tradition. But don't limit yourself with only that. Otherwise, you can become fanatic. My God, my tradition is bigger than yours. My father was a very clear person. He said, if you study on, only Indian culture, it is not good. If you study only Indian culture, it is not good. Imagine, you are such a proud person of Indian culture. So am I. But he said, you know, if you only study Indian culture, you are not right. You have to study the world culture and world philosophies. Then your knowledge will broaden. Study the Greek philosophy, even the American philosophy, German philosophy, Japanese philosophy. I have to still study that because one lifetime is not enough to study Indian culture only. But whenever I get a chance, you know, I go for all these conferences nationally, internationally. I meet the scholars, I read the books. Believe me, you become so wide. Vyasa Vishala Buddha. Wide and deep. So, Trai is the name of the chapter, but he also includes two more. Atharva Veda and Itihasa Veda. So, Sri Ram. Next time you say, you know, Jai Sri Ram. Now it's becoming very popular. So, Sri stands for Srimad Bhagavatam. R for Ramayana and Mahabharata as a text. We need to bring them out from the libraries and have a copy and study it and believe me, your life will change. It has happened with me. I'm sure it will happen with all of you. Now, then these are called the main Vedas, the four to begin with. Today we call it four. Rig Veda, Sam Veda, Yajur Veda, Atharva Veda. I'll not go into details because each of them is a chapter by itself. But we are only giving a helicopter view. Rig Veda has got a lot of, you know, rituals. In fact, the first deity in Rig Veda is called Agni. Agni Mile. And Indian culture is not complete without fire. Fire? Yeah, Rig Veda starts with invoking the Lord fire. Look at our Indian culture. We start with the sun, isn't it? Om Bhur Bhuaswa. What is sun? Fire. So Gayatri. Uh, you know, you do Gayatri Mantra. That's invocation of sun. Knowledge. It is not just only the sun. Okay, fire lit. If you have a housewarming ceremony, you have a housewarming, many of you know this, you know, the pujari will enter the house and he'll, you know, you have to warm up the milk in the kitchen. Okay, marriage ceremony. You have a fire lit, yagna kunda, and you take seven chakra around it, and lifelong chakra only. So there also fire is there. Your life starts with fire, your life ends with fire. You know, you're burnt in fire. That's Indian culture, of course. And Agni, that's the where you find your body is burnt. And Agni is called as the mouth of the Devatas. How do you feed the Devatas? You know, there is an Devata up in the sky or wherever. How do you, you know, give food to him or her? Offer it to the fire deity. So every Havan Yagna, they put rice, they put fruits, milk, all this, you know. So what is it? Suppose I want to feed you. You have a physical mouth open, beta. Ah, put. Okay. But how do you feed the gods? Fire. So coming by the Rig Veda, there's a lot of rituals. 
Samaved, Yajurved, lot of things. Atharvaved is interesting. It's got lot of, you know, different kind of rituals, including occult practices. That's why Chanakya included that. We'll see as we go ahead later. Now comes, there are, these are the main Vedas, four Vedas plus Itihasa Veda. So five covered, but no, not enough. Indian knowledge is so vast. So there comes another called Upa Vedas. Okay, what are these? Phonetics, rituals, grammar, Vyakarana, uh, etymology, prosody, and astronomy. These are the auxiliary sciences. So there are called Vedangas, six of them are there. Okay, Chanda, Jyotish and all this. Imagine the leader has to study astrology. Oh, astrology means she can tell me the future. Look at me hand. No, 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 no. Astrology starts with astronomy. It is not future prediction. It is not future prediction. It's understanding the movements of the planets and the stars. And what you should do? Like for example, all of you know you have to come on Saturday morning, 7.30 to 9 am ist right how do you decide that oh i have a calendar who created the calendar based on what so there's a timing there is a kind of a month there is a week all this is part of astrology you know again not part of the class please study what is called panchanga panchanga in astrology they don't even know this and today there are a lot of moments saying okay we have to relook at the calendar and every four years, we have a leap year. It's actually a false system. We are blindly following. Just look at what is called the Indian calendar or Hindu calendar. This is not the month that we used to follow. Our calendar was very spiritual. Purnima and Amavasya. Forgotten it. Oh, holy just happened. But remember, it is Purnima, full moon. So we have festivals around seasons. We have festivals around the full moon day, the new moon day. No. I have a small suggestion to all of you. Whichever language, culture you belong to, please keep a physical copy of the calendar hung on your wall. You can ask your mother, grandmother, if you have. Say, okay. Like for example, in Maharashtra, that time physically, we have Kala Nirne. If you look at, if you go to Kerala, there will be, you know, this calendar is called from traditional printers like Matru Bhumi, Malayala, Manorama, etc. Of course, they'll follow January, February, March for easy reference. But if you fine tune it, you understand it, they're all there. Which day, what is Rahu Kal? You know, what is auspicious time? Which is the Muhurat? So usually the pundits will look at those parameters. But the question is that why are you dependent on the pundit to tell you what is right and wrong? You can take the pundit's help, the astrologer's help to look at the fine tuning. But how many of us don't even know the real, how to calculate the stars. Like for example, I remember we had a group of people who have taken them to Mumbai Darshan. And they said something, okay, we want to see the sunset in Mumbai. But they had come from North Delhi and they never see a beach. In Bombay, we are a place, city which is close to the sea. For us, sunrise and sunset on the beach is very normal. But for those Delhi heads, so no, we want to see the beach and a sunset in the beach. What would you and me do? Google it and say, okay, when is the sunrise today? When is the sunset today? So, because it's uh, getting summer, you know, a few days ago, I just typed, okay, sunset in Mumbai, 6.52 p.m. So, I took them at 6.30, we played around, and we saw the sunset at 6.52. And that's how we saw the sunset. Or next day, if you have to see the sunrise, you have to look at the Google and say, okay, weather.com. I don't know, this is an app called weather.com, which most of the mobile applications would use. Traditional method, we lived with nature and we tuned ourselves to nature. So how to decide the sunrise, sunset, and also we have to go through all this. So that's why the study of astronomy is so important. Interestingly, India's calendar called Almanac, actually the real name of calendar is called Almanac, is based on astrological cycles. A very important point here, again off the record from the main topic, you know, Indian concept of time is very different. Indian concept of time calculation is very different from the Western world. What is time? If you look at oh, time means it's got units like seconds, we have minutes and hours, right? 
and days, weeks, months, time. When do we meet? We'll meet after three months. Okay. So we are in April, May, June, July. Oh, the right time to meet is after three months. Okay, that's very, very, you know, I would say clock related timing. And of course, the Olympic uh, players go to an extent of saying not seconds, milliseconds. And today we have instruments who can calculate that also. Indian concept of time is not only what is called samay. If you want to translate today's time in Hindi or whatever it's called, samay. Kitna samay hua hai? What is the time right now? Oh, it's 8.15. Half the class is over. Oh, that's time only from the Western perspective. We have different you know, views to time. The other word for time in India is called kala. Kala is bigger. All the uh, hamara samay thik nahi chal raha hai. And the Ashra Jol said, Tumara Samay ka problem nahi hai, Tumara Kaal ka problem hai. And we have a God also for that Kaal, it's called Shivji. You know, so Kaal, Kaal hai bhai rao. One more word, Yuga. That's also time, but not the way we understand. Oh, look at the clock and the watch and say, oh, kitna Yuga ho gaya hai. And a Yuga is a very different concept, thousands of years. And we can calculate that with precision. What a culture that you can calculate time with such positions in this particular country. That's why you have to study astronomy and astrology, which is interconnected for all of us. So I'm just trying to inspire you to study Indian wisdom beyond what is given in the Arthur Shastra. Okay. So etymology and astronomy. These are Oxford Remember, Remember the king has got so much wisdom in the training. So apart from the school education, if you have children and grandchildren, please train them with basics. I am a student of Jyoti Shastra. It is mind-boggling. And unfortunately, we only know one part of astronomy or astrology. Future prediction. Mere zindagi mein kya hoga? Are kya hoga kya? Kya kar sakte ho pucho? What can I do? So again, all these are studied. The four Vedas, or I would say three Vedas, plus fourth Veda, Atharva Veda, plus Ramayana and Mahabharata, plus all these things. You know, imagine a child coming out from such a training, how brilliant he or she would be. And they have studied all the Upanishads, Vedas and all. Again, I don't want to take a Vedanta class. You have to proceed with Chanakya class. So a lot of people are now commenting. Thanks for providing the platform and resource for original. Please understand this. Artha Shastra is the tip of the iceberg. Or oh, tip of the iceberg is 6,000 sutras. Imagine how much the ocean would be. I want to make all of you feel guilty. That's my objective. But so what kind of a crook is this Radha Krishna Pillai? Hamko dukhi banana chata hai. Only in pain you will discover happiness. So, so much knowledge and I don't know anything. Good. It's a good problem. Otherwise we glorify. We have one degree called BSc From one institute called IIT. You are done with life. Are? No, 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 no. Degree doesn't make you knowledgeable. This is knowledge seeking. You know, one of my teachers used to tell Bharata, the name of a country. Many people say oh, it, is, it is because of, you know, the great uh, king called Bharat. That's true. But you know what is the meaning of Bharata? It's combination to Bha plus Rata. Bha means knowledge. Bhaskara, sun reflects knowledge. Rata, one who reveals. You know, keep reading, keep discussing. Shastra Rata. When you have everything in life, what will you do? Today, people are saying, bore or I. I don't know what to do. Thinkers never get bored. Knowledge seekers never get bored. I've seen a lot of people today getting into what is called, what is that word today coming? Isolation. Oh, I'm getting bored. Today, loneliness is a big problem because you don't know what is knowledge. A person who is a seeker of knowledge will never feel lonely. He's happy or she is happy. Setting quality, discovering new dimensions. That is called Rishis. Better on. If you have a book, keep reading. If you don't have a book, you are the book. I know a lot of people who are not great readers, but they are good observers of people around, of the society. They just sit outside the window and observe things happening. They look at the moon and the stars and they get ideas. So if you are a true Bharati, you are a true knowledge seeker. Okay, so different, different. So king is established in the Vedas and all those things. So there's somebody raising the hands. Uh, I'll complete it and then take yours because then we lose the thought flow. 
Okay. Now coming back. The law laid down by the Vedic lore is beneficial. See, now he's saying why you should study because all this is there in the Vedas. It's very beneficial as it precedes the uh, respective duties of the four Varnas and four stages of life. Very important. Very, very important. Chatur Varna and Chatur Ashrama. Write it down. You need to study this. Four is Chatur Varna. Varna is classifications of stages of life. And four Ashramas. Chatur Varna and Chatur Ashramas. The respective duties. So all of us born in India have to follow this whether you like it or not. But that's the culture we are born in. So our Indian culture, the Vedic culture is actually dependent on this four Varna Ashramas. Varna and Ashrama. What are they? Chanak will explain. And I'm sure many of you heard about it. The four Varnas. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra and the four Ashramas. Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa. In the olden days, and the Artha Shastra also is called Parivrajaka. It is not Sanyasi as the word. Sanyasi as a word came in later on, after Adi Shankaracharya. Predominantly set by the Buddhist culture and then perfected as a Sanyas Ashram by Adi Shankaracharya. There are 10 types of Sanyasis by names. Saraswati, Giri, etc. etc. Again, another subject for all of you to study. So, for a leader, he needs to understand the four Varnas and Ashramas. Why? We will see that. The special duties. Now he says, you know, let's start with the four Varnas. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shodra. So suppose you are a Brahman, not by birth, okay? Birth is only starting point. By your Swabhava. Okay, I know people who are actually born in a Brahmin family, but no interest. Okay. Because I see a lot of people, especially who are born in priestly class. They don't want to follow all the rituals. They are IT engineers. Nothing wrong. So, by Swabhava, by nature, Gunatraya Vibhagaha. These are the words used in Bhagavad Gita. How do you determine who you are? I am a Brahmana, even though born in a Kshatriya family. Okay, I am a Brahmana by passion, by dispassion, though born in a Kshatriya family. You know, so, my grandfather was in the army. He was part of World War II. So, we have this pride. And if you look at my Swabhava, I have a little bit of genetically uh, kind of a warrior also in me. So, this passion all comes from the Kshatriya. But, if you look at my wiring of the mindset that I am a knowledge seeker, so I become a Brahmana. Now, if you are a Brahmana by birth as well as this, what are you supposed to do? Number one, the special duties of Brahmanas are studying. Oh, you have to study. Adhyayana, continuously. No, no, no. Study is only till 25 years till you get a degree. No. Lifelong studying. Teaching. What is the part of only studying? Give it back. So, Brahmana should teach others. Then performing sacrifices for the self. You know, the Brahmana, the priestly class is known for doing a lot of rituals. Agni, Hotra and a lot of other pujas. Actually, in our culture, everybody, including the male or the females, can do puja on their own. Because we don't know, we call the Purohit the Yaj, and we are the Yajivan and we do the pujas. But it's a duty of the Brahmanas to keep studying the knowledge teaching, they'll run gurukulas, they'll come and do a lot of rituals for you and for themselves also, for self. Offering at other people's sacrifices, see? So he goes and assists other people who don't know. So I don't know if something happens. Like for example, recently, my father expired, so a lot of rituals were happening. I don't know all the rituals, you know, Shraddha Sarmini, I don't know how to do all these things. So what do I do? Either I go to a temple and ask the priest or call the priest home. So, they will come and do the puja. So we had this Kerala Nambudiris. So I come from the origin of Kerala. They did the puja so beautifully. So I became the Yajman. And in the name of my father and my ancestors, they do the puja. So first of all, a Brahmana has to do for himself and for others also. And helping them in those particular sacrifices. Making gifts and receiving gifts. Okay. Brahmana Bhojana Priyaha. What is the kind of a gift that you give to a Brahmana? Oh. Khana de do. Thoda dakshina de do. Give some dakshina. Give no, no, no. Even the Brahmana is supposed to give gifts. I mean, I realized a very interesting ritual. You know, if you ever see a big puja or a small puja, there will be a chief priest and assisting priest. A chief priest and there will be two, three assistants. Right? So, the dakshina that the chief priest gives also has to be given to the assistants. 
it's not him to take home so he'll ask okay if you give them five dhotis he'll take one and he'll distribute to the other brahmacharis or other pujaris so giving gifts and taking because he doesn't have other income the brahmana community is not a vaishya community they are not money makers they are not wealth creators they are knowledge creators remember this a brahmana is a knowledge creator i was very fortunate to have a guide dr shubhada joshi when i did my phd she told you know the work of a brahman and brahman doesn't mean only one wearing a jenny okay even a teacher is a brahmana a professional teacher in university school college and she should tell what is our responsibility creating knowledge creating knowledge is our responsibility creating wealth is the responsibility of the vaishyas the business community so when i write 22 books it's also knowledge creation you know teaching somebody that's also knowledge creation so what i'm doing right now is my brahmana dharma i have to give you gift and you also have to give me a are you free me lot of people have got a habit and jayesh was complaining the other day kuch bhi bolo sab free me mangte hain in fact we had recommended deepa agarwal's book and somebody said can we get it free like the other books i said wah wow. nice attitude poor thing that lady has done so much research you can't give that much also to her can't you buy her books no this is another problem there are a lot of people who have money but still don't give i have knowledge i am giving i have no problem i am not charging something anything and this book is copyright free so that's why we are distributing but when i am telling you go and recommend go and do a course maybe it's a few thousand rupees uh, you have to make sure that you spend it in fact in indian culture we always give more for example if you charge 100 rupees we we'll give 101 rupee please make it a habit to give this country and this generation has got a problem we don't like to give takers holders give 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 to me this is famous joke you know one person was drowning and somebody went to help him saying okay give me a hand give me a hand i'll pull you out he said no are you are dying one person came to me i'll tell you he's got a problem he doesn't know how to give you should tell him something else so he went to the person said, okay take my hand he immediately took the hand and came out you know today we have to understand it's a culture that we need to create please teach your children to give it i'm not only telling you give in the form of money maybe knowledge something else in fact every diwali we give out because they are useless diwali mein saaf safai karte hai na oh i gave what did you give useless things you know swami vivekananda used to compare this with nachiketa in the katha upanishad nachiketa's father was a very wealthy landlord and he was giving away what unwanted cows ना मिल्क दे सकता है ना कुछ कर सकता है दैट्स नॉट गिविंग इफ यू गिव गिव द बेस्ट एंड गिव मोर देन व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड इन इंडिया व्हेन यू गो टू अ टेंपल इट्स नॉट 500 रुपीस 501 इफ आई रिमेंबर अ ग्रेट फ्रेंड ऑफ माइन इज यू नो ज्यादा दो यार यू नो दोस प्रीस्ट दे डोंट हैव एन इनकम एंड देयर आल्सो यू बार्गेन ऑफ कोर्स द प्रीस्ट शुड आल्सो नॉट बी ग्रीडिंग जो मिला स्वांत सुखाय आई एम हैप्पी सो इफ इट ऑल यू फाइंड समबडी हु इज वर्थ गिविंग especially brahmana please give so that's the point receiving and making gifts they have to receive they have to give and the person who doesn't give his knowledge will never be complete dakshina dena chahiye okay next now comes brahmana kshatriya what is the duty of kshatriya studying oh kshatriya is supposed to fight no fighting is a weaponry that's an art and a skill you have to have knowledge for fighting the weapon you know i train the armed forces I've been very fortunate, and I was with this commander, and they are part of the intelligence department, and we are having a cup of tea because I was taking a lecture for the young generation officers, so Indian Navy, Army, Air Force. So the commander is very happy. He read my book, China and Art of War. You know what he told me? It was so touching. After the Britishers left, we were only training our soldiers to go and fight, and no intellect to be used. There's a very famous saying in the army. Yours is not to ask how or why. Why do I do it? How do I do it? Yours is not to ask. You are supposed to only obey orders. Ours is not to ask how or why. Other ours is either to do or die. But that's a wrong thing. That is okay for Britishers. You come and okay, shoot. Jalen wala ba? Why? I don't know. So the general dialogue says shoot, shoot. 
your own people on a festival of Baisakhi shoot, no intellect. And the commanding officer told me, imagine we have a generation of intelligent, well-trained, well-studied officers going and fighting the war. The quality is very different. So Kshatriyas is not just about fighting. Huh? Okay, Brahmastra. Wait, wait. Studying is the duty of a Kshatriya. So if you are in the armed forces also, you are supposed to study like the Brahmana studying. But don't stop at studying. Performing sacrifices for self. You also have to do your rituals. A lot of people say, you know, what are all these rituals outdated? You know, they are blind faith. Thank you. You never know your own culture. By the way, I am in, born in a family where we never believe in rituals. Never. That was not the training I got. But once you understood scientific, I said, my goodness. And for those people who don't believe in rituals, welcome to the club. Study the rituals and then perform the rituals. You know, especially a lot of people, especially their parents die. Again, I'll give you my example. My father died recently. My teacher told me and a lot of my friends told me the Shraddha ceremony should be done with Shraddha. Done with faith, but not blind faith. I studied the whole process. What is the Shraddha ceremony? And 41 days over different rituals now to do once in a year. And I'll tell you, it's so beautiful. And it's not something for yourself. Your parents have done so much for you. Your teachers have done so much for you. You have to do that. They may not be physically with you. But they'll be with you forever. Not just memories. Huh? The knowledge remains with you. It's an attitude of gratitude. All these rituals that you have. So, okay. But coming back. Kshatriya is supposed to also perform sacrifice. In fact, we have Vedic sacrifices for war also. Next, living by the profession of arms and protecting beings. So what is the duty of a Kshatriya? Abhi Shastra bhi chahiye. You get your income because of protecting the people. So the very famous, you know, the army is on the borders, but they are supposed to be telling you the fighting skills also. So all the Shastras are there. So Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya. Okay, now uh, who are the Vaishyas? They are the business community, the wealth creators. Studying, they also have to study. Today we send them to business schools. Isn't it? You go and do an MBA and come back. I teach in so many of the schools like that. I'm going to IMM. I am now recently, they called me and I go to different IMs. What are these business schools? You have to study. Performing sacrifices for sale. They also are supposed to do rituals. Making gifts. Agriculture. During the old days, the business profession were three. And agriculture, cattle rearing and trade. India has got a traditional. Everybody should do agriculture, especially the Vaishya community and others also. Everybody is a farmer. Then cattle rearing. You know, cattle was the wealth of our country. So you have to take care of your cattle and trade, trading. These are the three economic models of traditional India. Now there are many. We have an IT culture also, manufacturing culture also. So all this comes. So the Vaishyas are supposed to do that. Next, the Shudras. So here is a lot of debate happening. Shudras are, you know, being not respected in our culture. And there are a lot of, you know, labor movements in our country. But that's not true. If you go back to the Vedic culture, if you look at that certain part of the society, they may not be intelligent like the others, you know, they can't study. I've tried this in many places, you know, give them education, free education, a lot of things, but you know, nature has not given them the intellect to study further. So saying, okay, the one section said, wait, no problem. Well, if you don't study also, it's fine. Of course, you should be basic literate. So what are the duties of the uh, Shudra? Service of the twice born. They call Dvija. So if there is a person who is a Brahmin or somebody who is very intelligent, go and work under them. So look at all the you know companies that we have. We have the labor class, isn't it? And you know, they also should study. But sometimes they can't study. Let me repeat the word. They should study, but they can't because of limitation. I know of a girl we tried to sponsor for education. You know, one time failed, then we put in the special classes. Still failed. Third time, we put in a special coaching, spend money, give her counseling. Kya kare, what to do in spite of all the things? Parents are frustrated. She is also frustrated. To the extent of telling, you know, how much people are putting efforts on me, but I can't understand. I can't understand. Third time failed. After all the effort, then we realize, wait, wait. It's okay. You know how to read and write? Yes. You know how to count? Yes. Now, go to service, take up some small job or skill. Maybe tailoring or something like that. Make your life. Remember one thing, if you are blessed that you can study, like all the people present over here, 
we are actually people can understand concepts. I don't know if you've seen some funny videos. There's this one video that there's this lady who comes to clean the house. Okay. And on the month end, she has to be given some 2000 rupees. So this particular person, you know, it is an old video when 2000 notes were there before demonetization. So every month, this owner of the house used to give her a 2000 rupees note and she used to take away happily. And one month, what happened is that she was given <laughs> four 500 rupee notes. Four 500 rupee notes and saying, okay. You know what she said? Why are you cheating me? Where am I cheating you? 2000 rupees, see? And he says, no, no, you are giving me 500 notes. Last time you give me 200 ka note. This time you give me 500. Like, Listen, I'm giving you 500 multiplied by 4. And she said, what? No, no, no. Look at the note. It says 500. But he says, wait, there are 1, 2, 3, 4. He explains for 20 minutes. He says, you know, this is 2000 rupees. She doesn't understand. And say, I'll complain to police. For what? Well, I work so much every day. You know, I work very hard. I come in the morning. I come in the evening. I do so much things. And you're cheating me. Where did I cheat you? I'm giving you 2,000 rupees and four notes of 500. No. The lady says, I don't want your 500. I want 2,000. And the person understands that. No logic works. Then he goes and brings out a 2,000 rupee note from a friend. And she's happy. Ah. Now I got my work. Say, come on. I mean, you may laugh at it. But the reality is that you know, basic mathematics also some people can't. I'm not telling that Indians are anyway good in maths. But I'm just telling you. So there are people. So what should such people do? Genocide. Oh, India. Great culture of education. And, and it's become like a, you know, kind of a passion for every parent to teach a child. You have to become an engineer or a doctor. I don't want. I'm happy being a painter. No. You have to study. Why? Because in India, if you're not an engineer, you don't have a social status. And there is a huge parallel education called integrated systems. I don't know if you heard about it. So you don't even go to a college, but you become an engineer. Wow. Nice. Very good. Very, very good. Anyway, but Chanakya and Vedic culture has got a solution for such people also. Don't force them. Inspire them. Don't force them, inspire them. Those for the Shuddha service of the toys board. You know what a service means? Go and associate yourself with somebody who is more intelligent, who is having a vision in life. You know, somebody used to ask me, what if I don't have a vision or a passion in life? Possible. You know, a lot of people say, I need to have a passion, I need to have a profession, all these things. Yeah. Sanaki is very clear. If you don't have one, associate yourself with somebody who has one. I don't have life goal, nahi hai, but there's people who have a life goal. Go and work with them, serve them. That's a point, the Shudra. Engaging in an economic calling. You should also work because whatever it is, you have to get some money. So agriculture, catering and train and the profession of artist and actor. See, these people are intelligent, but they are very talented also. Education doesn't guarantee talent. But God has blessed everybody with talent. And you look at a look at lot of talented people are not necessarily educated. And if you have a combination of talent and education, perfect. So follow some profession. Now, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, they are supposed to do all these things. Now comes the Chatur Ashramas. We saw Chatur Varanas. You have to find out who am I. But there's a process. Some other time we'll talk about it. But next is householder. Now he comes to student. Householder. So, Brahmacharya, Grasa, Vanaprastha and Parivrajaka. What are the duties? The king is trained. Huh? This is what his people are supposed to do. Those of the householders are earning his living in accordance with his own special duty. You have to earn money. You are a householder. You have to feed your family. There are so many mouths to be fed. But not because everybody is an engineer, you have to become an engineer. Your special duty. Like for in my, my case, I discovered that you know my passion and my special talent is teaching, reading, researching. I am also earning money. So don't have any, you know, that, what is that, you know, emotional towards me. Oh, Radha Krishna Pillai, Bechara, giving knowledge to you. No Bechara, nothing. I am other source of income also. So you should decide what's your field. Okay. Earning his living in accomplishment with own spirit. So I have been given that special duty by God, by gurus, by teachers, that you continue this teaching profession. Marrying into families of the same caste, but not of the same gotra. India, we believe that marriage is such a spiritual relationship. 
but then we have this you know matching of horoscope in most of the communities the same caste but not the same gotra gotra means family brother sisters don't get married in indian culture the same community same caste that's another science we'll talk about it some other time approaching the wife during the period the period is not during periods so you know the male female when they come together they have certain days so you avoid certain days the recommended period that's when you have children and progeny next worship of the gods it's a family duty to worship the god i hope everybody has got a small altar in your houses whatever god you keep there could be a kula devata grama devata maybe some krishna whatever you believe in even if you are not from the hindu culture there will be some small you know cross or some photo of some makka madina it's very important in indian culture and you have to worship it it could be a ritual like you know ghanti baja ke aarti karo aur ek lamp lagao but that has to be done by household so following all the rituals next uh worship of the gods menas and guest so atithi devo bhav indian culture menas pitru never forget your forefathers shade sony one ceremony in fact in many houses i've seen if they prepare food they will take out something for the gods even for the animals and even for the forefathers they keep saying okay i have only seen my grandfather but as too small remember if you had a grandfather you also had a great grandfather oh i never i never seen one just because you not seen one doesn't mean and the great grandfather also had a great grandfather you may not have seen them but you are because they were you are because they were so you have to remember them every day so in your daily rituals add your parents in but i remember somebody advising if you pray to your parents every day it's equaling equal to praying to god every day and especially i have seen that you know even if you are a woman who is married into a new family in fact you have two families and two set of parents two lineages so you go to both families in diwali we do that right in festivals oh you should continue all this duties of a household let's see how beautiful a culture is we don't break relationship we grow in relationship oh ek ghar chhod ke aayi what ek ghar chhod ke aayi no wo ghar mera hai ye bhi mera hai and the word for a wife in indian culture is called gruhni pura ghar jiska runi hai runi means i can't pay her because she's taking care of two families and today with mobile they are accessible right they'll call up mamma kaise ho khana kha and the mamma will ask the daughter who is 62 years old beta tune khana kha in india family expands it doesn't go down we are not an individual culture we are an expansive culture okay so we have to take care of your current generation and previous generation as a video so disturbing it was you know an old lady in a poor house they actually killed her जगह नहीं है मार मार के उसको मार डाला चाणक्य से atithi devo forget your own family members you have to take care of the others also who come today everybody stays in a hotel guest house guest in the house is a blessing and i find that when i go abroad people wait for guest to come aur hamare ghar pe rukna aur hamare ghar pe mat rukna hotel hai na book kar denge ha i understand space constraint and all this but no guest is so important making gift to dependents and eating what is left over after others have been eaten very important part of indian culture you eat the leftover including males you know this is a model that every indian woman will always have 3 l l l l what is l l l last least and leftover look at the joy she will feed everybody and she will only have l l l the men should also start that in fact we try that in our in some organization that we consult you know You work with a lot of organizations, saying that you know who eats first in your office. Of course, the chairman, the managing director. No. Now onwards, the workers will eat first. The chairman has to feed the workers, and after everybody is done, you eat. And the organization culture changed. 
So all these are responsibilities of a householder. Okay, can you go to the next part, you know? And the five minutes will be able to complete this chapter also. So we saw the duties of a householder. Now we see, okay, those of a student. Actually, first is student, then comes householder. So what are the students supposed to do? Those of the students of the Vedas are, what are they supposed to do? Studying the Veda. You have to study, that's your prime responsibility. No, in exam ka bhai tab dekhenge. No. Swadhyaya. Mumbai, this is a spiritual organization called Swadhyaya Parivar. Panduranga Shastri Atavya. Studying every day. So, in a Gurukul or at a home, you don't have to go to tuitions. It's your responsibility. Tuition can help you. So, studying the Vedas, tending the sacred fires and ceremonial bathing. So, they have to assist the main guru in rituals. And also taking care of, you know, some taking care of the rituals. So you see the assistant, they assisted the gurus, acharyas, keeping the war of living on arms only. I don't earn in student days. Today we have, you know, part-time job. Full-time study. And whatever job, you're not supposed to do a job in student days. Your mind will get defocused. Whatever you get, after if the guru tells you eat, eat. I know of a guru, very strict guru, very strict guru. So, you know, the children used to go beg and used to come to the guru. He used to keep. Remember, you got a begging uh, arms. You go to every house and collect. But you don't need. You give it to the guru. The guru decides. The guru actually was very angry on the students that day. Because all of them did not study. But in the evening, they had to go for bhiksha. And everybody collected some bhiksha and gave it to the guru. And the guru patni. The guru mata, rishi mata. And they said, today no dinner for anybody. But we got food, Guruji. You're feeling hungry. Nothing. Today you did not study. So nobody will eat food today. They were all upset. They went em empty, stomach, and they slept next day morning. Okay, he called everybody. And said, okay, today also you don't have breakfast. Huh? So they thought this Guru is very shana. He got all the food. He ate it himself. But actually later on they realized that he did not eat it himself. The Guru Patni, the emotional mother, you know, because the Guru Patni is like the mother of all the students. Everybody has sent their children to the Guru Kul. She said, what are you doing? Why are you torturing these little boys, you know? And, you know, they should eat. Oh, no, they have not studied. It's a punishment. But doesn't mean I'm eating. Even I will not eat. So the Guru, he also did not have the breakfast and the privilege, you know. By lunchtime, they're completely exhausted. They're studying overnight. Okay. Now all of you eat. And after you have eaten, I will eat. That's the love of discipline. So coming back, you don't earn. So today there are a lot of universities which have scheme of earn and learn. Learn, earning will happen. Vedic culture. No. Okay. Keeping the woe of living in arms only, residing till the end of his life with the preceptor or in his absence with the preceptor's son or with a fellow student. Very important. Even if you have passed out from a Gurukul, you are in touch with the Gurukul. Today we are alumni mates. Isn't it? We are in touch with friends. No, the Gurukul system, you have to be in touch. You have to contribute because after you go out, you earn, you contribute. And if your Guru is not there, maybe his son will continue that legacy, right? So remember, Indian culture is you never are out of your Gurukul. Formally, yes, your education is over. Your Diksha sermon is over. Your convocation is over. You are married, you are settled, but no. In fact, I remember I have Prime Minister only Modi ji, one of his talks on Pariksha Pe Charcha, he said something very interesting about the success of a teacher. He said success of a teacher is not how many students passed out and how many teachers earned. The success of a teacher is how many students invited you for their marriages. And today we hardly have anybody inviting them. And that's, you know, first invitation should go to the teacher. I have been fortunate that I get a lot of invitations. But you know, it's a pain that you taught the student for 10-15 years and he doesn't remember you on that day. In fact, the teacher is the one who conducts the marriage also. So we have Kula Devtas, Kula Gurus, in yeah, different topic. Time limitations will proceed. Now comes what is called after the student days, what is called the forest anchorite, which is generally called the uh, Vana Prastha. So, remember, they're not sannyasi, they are retired, their children have become big. So, it's called you know, retirement kind of a days, vana prastha, vana, forest. So, they're ready to go to the forest now. Okay. Observing celibacy. 
so now become old also they observing celibacy physical celibacy sleeping on bare ground they give up their luxuries one by one slowly it time you got 25 years you have served the family and nothing wrong you got all the luxury of life but you don't stop there okay give up today it's a concept called minimalism right so give up give up give up it's not easy to give up so you are given time slowly you start sleeping small small rituals habits should develop wearing matted locks and an antelope skin so basically you start simple dress in the olden days you know today you can be dhoti and you know, give up all your you know my father used to always tell me you may be successful and by the grace of god i am but one day you'll have to give up all those things and that remained with me ek bar tumhe sab chhodna padega and be ready for that day if i said that you know planning for retirement makes you more productive you will only plan how to get into a career people never plan exit out of a career and a career is not forever and government job 60 tata you are very good but sit at home what to do now lot of retired people have a problem what to do after retirement because they don't have a spiritual base no study culture then they go and join some other company as consultant my goodness what a culture we had and what a culture we are doing now so detachment is the role of a vana prasthi then worship of the sacred fires and ceremonial bathing so you continue rituals abhishek what are you do worshiping the gods your pitrus the menas and guests and lying in only on forest produce you don't even produce no agriculture jo mil jata hai khalo see next the last day now you become a parivrajak now let's say 25 years you are a student 25 years to 50 years you are a grahastha 50 to 75 years you are a retired person vana prasthi then what do you do remember you are still with the family retirement is not out of the family but now you say okay everything is done i have seen my grandchildren also in fact having grandchildren is a fulfillment of life now what ho gaya sab kuch abhi chodo niklo ghar bhi chhod do because the children have come in you need to vacate your rooms chalo chalo enough time chalo get out before people kick you out you should know how to get out beautiful statement i read before somebody kicks you out you should know and you should have the wisdom to get out yourself so where do you go in the olden days forest it becomes an ascetic having full control over the senses aise nahi ghumne gaya aur ek laddu dikh gaya are wah i remember the olden day laddu nothing full control then refraining from all active life you know i'll tell you after send for people will invite you but you should not go your active life is over being without any possessions give up everything give up of all attachment to worldly ties in fact in sanyasa you do your own pindadan main khud ke liye mar chuka hu no no your son will come papa papa aap humko tumhari zarurat hai you get emotional ha beta wow and you get ego kick people still want me at this age only nataka even if somebody wants you don't give an advice and make sure you get out see this is very important otherwise you will get into a kind of a psychological block nobody appreciates me at this age people are appreciating me just just walk away no no attachment no activity only one activity god realization you have lost all this great culture being in any position giving up attachment to worldly ties keeping the vow of begging arms you may be the richest man but you should know theek hai now remember the training given in the gurukul begging we go back to begging if this body has to live it will live on the society food that's why to support them also residing not in one place and in one forest you know a lot of people get attached to one small ashram also keep moving in fact the rule says every 3 days you should keep moving otherwise you go to house aao aao swami ji baitho after 3 days you become attached to that family mere bete se acha family hai keep moving that's called parivrajaka braja don't get attached to any house so every place after 3 days you move 3 days is maximum you know you should move every day i do that even today you know every second day i am in some city sometimes in some five star hotel seven star hotel sometimes in somebody's house some school some accommodation but move come home for two days again move it's a great life full life enjoy your life as this way you don't have to do world travel you travel within yourself Okay, attachment to worldly ties, keeping the war, begging arms, 
residing not in one place and in a forest and observing external and internal cleanliness. Okay. Now you are an old man, Sanyasi. You are not supposed to be shabby. So it also be taken there. Now, beauty is common to all. Whether you are in any stage of life or any profession, these are common things. What are they? Abstaining from injury to living creatures. Ahimsa. You should not unnecessarily harm anybody. No living. Truthfulness. Satyam. Uprightness. Freedom from millage. You should not be crooked. You know, a lot of people do calculation. Then uh, compassionate. Yeah, and these all these qualities are there in everyone. The observance of one own special duty. The word is called Swadharma. You know, you should... Look. Shanti my karte deta. Do -do minute mein kuche ja Anilji, if you can mute yourself, please. I request everybody to mute. Because, you know, yeah, thank you, Anilji. Okay, the observance of unknown special duty. The word comes in this chapter seven times. Swadharma, follow what is your duty. Stage of life and the kind of uh, position of life. So I'm 75 years old. My position is this. You should do special duties of the different beings. Okay. The observance of one's own will lead to heaven and endless bliss. The common man, 90% doesn't believe in moksha. They believe in the other world. Oh, you should get some, you know, heaven. Okay. If you follow this, you get heaven. But an endless bliss. In fact, in Vedanta, they say you don't have to go to heaven. You can be happy here and now. Jeevan Mukta. Great culture. In case of transgression, if you don't do this, follow all these rules, people are, people would be exterminated through the mixture of duties and caste. So they'll get intermingled. So imagine somebody at the age of 82 getting married and having two children. There are a lot of videos going around. Now. At 82, he become a father again. Well, he's got a son who is 62. And they feel very proud. Nothing wrong in that, okay? So, it's a personal choice. I have nobody to comment. But is it an achievement of life of 82 becoming a father? Okay, it can be an exception and things like that. But as a society, you have to understand there's much more bigger things to achieve. Now, now after all these things, remember, they've taken two topics of training for a king. Varna and Ashrama. Chatur Varna, Chatur Ashrama. So, this has been taught to a leader. Now, what is the leader supposed to do? Yes, sab hai. All this is what people are supposed to do. But people don't know and they don't follow. Then what is to be done? Therefore, the king should not allow the special duties of the different beings to be transgendered by him. If somebody is crisscrossing, no, that's where law comes in. Did you follow the duty of a householder? No, 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 I'm running away. Where? I'm going for moksha. Thak. Poor lady in the house with two children, you're living and saying, you're going to get moksha. The society will dismantle. In fact, this is the dharma of a king to make sure everybody follows the dharma. <laughs> Sorry. It's very important the king actually keeps them doing their duties. Imagine a student not studying. Good or bad? Very bad for a society. So the duty should not allow the special duties to be transgressed. They should not leave it. For what happens? Ensuring entrance to each one's special duty, he finds joy after death as well as in his life. The king, if he makes everybody follow the duty, himself will be happy in this life and next life. So Raja Gavi Valta, this is what you're supposed to do. The duty of a king. To make sure everybody follows their duty. I'll repeat it. The duty of a king is to make sure everybody follows their duties. Agar ye aisa ho gaya na, believe me the world. What we do is that everybody wants to do something else. Which everybody, somebody else is doing. Oh, Sachin Tendulkar. My son should become a Sachin Tendulkar. Wait. Sachin Tendulkar's father said you be a cricketer. You don't have to tell your son. Maybe he's supposed to become a mathematician. Astrology will come to help you. Remember, astrology is not about future. It's also about the past. It tells you why you are born in this world. A separate topic altogether. Your limitation of time. Now, what happens? The last point. For people among whom the bonds of the Aryan rule of life are fixed among whom the Varnas and the state of life are securely established and who are guarded by the three Vedas, prosper, do not perish. So the three Vedas you understand, make sure people understand, follow their duties. They are happy, you are happy. So the society is intact. This is Vedic culture. Otherwise, grass is always green on the other side. Oh, he becomes successful because he's a businessman. 
His name came in the Forbes list. It's nine o'clock. He's got a big bungalow. No, no, no. Maybe he's got a big bungalow, but you can have a big bungalow better than him if you are becoming a sportsman. How do you know that? There's a scientific process. We missed out on all those things. The day a child is born, we get the you know the pujari, the brahmana, the kula guru, and say, okay, he will make a charting. You know what is called jadagam or what is horoscope. And the child is meant to have these qualities. Swadharma. So make sure. And Arjuna deferred from that, you know. And then Krishna will tell, listen, you are a Kshatriya. Don't get emotional. Swadharma, Palanecha. Better to fail in your Swadharma than succeeding in somebody else's Swadharma. A lot of philosophical discussions, but I like to stop here by saying this is why the second, I mean, the knowledge for a leader is Trai. Quickly summarizing. Anvikshiki, Trai, Vartha, Dandaniti. Last time we saw Anvikshiki, Trai. Three Vedas, Rigved, Samved, Yajurved, Atharva is also there and Itihasa Veda and the six Vedangas have to be studied including astronomy etc etc. All this you can read up, a lot of literature available and four Varnas, Brahmana, Kshatri, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Parivarajakra or Sanyasa. The society will be intact. Today, you know, when I look at the situation, I feel where we have lost the Vedic culture. And by the way, don't look at only a Hindu or Indian culture. It's there in every part of the society, a world. In fact, many economists of the world are suffering because they don't know when to retire people, when to give them pension, what activities to do. Children not taking care of parents, parents not knowing their own duties, a lot of complex. So we require a new economic model. And by the way, all these are natural models. Okay, Don't think it was created by Chanakya. Chanakya emphasized that you know the Vedic culture is a natural culture which the king should know and promote. Otherwise, you are a failed leader and the whole world will be unhappy with your leadership. With that, I'll stop here. It's 9 o'clock. Maybe I'll take up a couple of questions if there are any. And anybody, you know, a lot of uh, types are there, but I'll try to take two or three questions if you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, Pavanji, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, sir. So my question is, uh, what is the difference between Chanakya Niti and Artha Shastra? Are they the same? They're not. I, we covered this in the first class. Chanakya Niti is a smaller version. It's got 350 sutras and the Artha Shastra has got 6,000 sutras along with Bhashyas. Size is different. Other thing is that Artha Shastra was written for leaders and Chanakya Niti was written for the common man. So we say Artha Shastra is Raja Vidya and Chanakya Niti is Praja Vidya. So these are the two differences. Okay. Thank you. Sir Lakshmi Kanti, yeah. yeah. So, what's the difference between Rajniti and Dandaniti? Because we refer to Dandaniti a lot of times. So, Rajniti includes Dandaniti. Okay. So, like governance includes, you know, judicial systems. So, a Rajniti or a Raja should know Rajniti, which includes Dandaniti, how much to punish. Because if you don't punish people, you are not a good Raja. But if you only punish people, you become a tyrant. So, Dandaniti is the wisdom that Raja should have for Rajani. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, and this is an interesting question coming. And the type, uh, the last bullet says Arya rule. Yeah. Arya doesn't mean the German Aryan race. Huh? Aryan means a noble society. So, for a noble, Arya is noble, noblemen. In the Greek culture, also Roman culture, we have the nobles. So the Aryan rule is not the Aryan race, the way Westerners look at the noble people. So the last bullet says Aryan rule. Arya is Sanskritam, just means noble. You are right. I humbly would like to submit that the translation is incorrect and based by the Western view, Aryan scheme. Yeah, absolutely. That topic is very debatable. So you are right. Here, the Western way of looking at Arya is highly debatable. I agree on your point. Sir, how is Swadharma decided? Is it based on birth or as usual we should horoscope? Very good question. In fact, Meena, if you can, there's a video of mine. It's, I think, a one-hour video finding your Swadharma. Yes, sir. We'll so share. You, please share it. So watch this video because the different methods. Today, in fact, there are psychological tools to find out what is called your passion. Passion vision kuch nahi, India mein Swadharma. So how to find out good question, we'll try and uh, give you a link also. So would you please tell what is the difference between karma and bhagya? Again, a tangent question. 
karma is the activity that you do and bhagya is your destiny so do your karma don't worry about your bhagya because a lot of people say oh i work so hard but it's not in my bhagya i don't get the results it's okay even if you don't get the results it's fine but you have to make sure you are doing your karmas and not just kriyas kriya means activity karma is when your attitude karma yoga is when your attitude of dedication even if i don't get the results i'll keep working bhagya mein kuch bhi ho main kaam karunga and the beauty of karma yoga is that whatever action you do it will come to you today tomorrow or in the next life good discussion philosophical we can go again bhumit says how to decide your so dharma i'll pass on the video is it based on birth we just saw that so could you please tell what is the difference between karma and bhagya we saw that there are people who take appointments even to see their parents so sad right parents wait for the children and children don't want their parents till they become parents a social problem anyway so we need to correct it so all of you at least start from your house is there any recommended book for studying indian rituals and their significance so many in fact i would suggest a very short book why do we please write the book it's a chinmaya mission book i would say it's almost like a booklet why do we do this why do we light the lamp why do we break a coconut why do we do you know agarbatti aarti so simple book why do we published by chinmaya mission why do we in indian culture it's a small booklet it's a good starting point there are various other books also i think even ramkrishna mission has got some books but i recommend this to start with precisely just because you are born brahmana doesn't make someone brahmin say samhita it is decided by your duty and the scope of work no more example of brahmin than yourself please thank you thank you priya so i said to i discovered that i became a brahmin i don't know why because it's the kind of a mindset you have and i know of a friend who's born in a brahmin family but actually the vaishya and is a good vaishya he says i maybe i'm a brahmin i do my rituals at home traditionally but i'm a businessman and he does very well he is employed more than i think uh, 70 chartered accountants work for him not bad and he's got offices globally so he's doing a sodharma i'm doing my sodharma and we partner with each other so it is not you are good at your subject i'm good at my subject we collaborate two good people coming together is a strength so uh, with time i like to end up over here i think we enjoyed this session and the way i enjoyed it but sir are you visiting surat i, I heard it somewhere and I, i think uh, i need to check when i go because i don't know where i am right now i don't know where <laughs> so I because i got some leaflet from jci that you are coming to surat so <laughs> i am i am there are some programs lined up in surat one in gandhinagar also okay and one in ahmedabad also so gujarat keeps calling me i never tell no to gujarat and gujarat <laughs> our pleasure sir so sir will it be possible that we can meet after the program so i will travel to surat i am not in surat but i will travel to surat so sure, sure such kind of meetings is very much welcome for me so meena oh. you can just connect me to uh, mayur later on i'll be happy to connect so with that Thank i like you. to call it a class because it's 9 8 right now i hope you enjoyed the class and i like to wind up with a question and you can type it on the chat box so anvikshiki trai vartha danda niti we are studying all of them in detail so anvikshi is over trai is over which is the next subject so no, i think good students will now guess it rightly absolutely i think we have priya all of you are right priya sanjay ankita yes so please read the chapter if you can even if you don't read it's okay but next week we'll be covering vartha establishment the king should understand all the four चतस्र एव विद्या इति कौटिल्य अन्वीक्षी त्रय वार्ता एंड देन दंडनी ओके सो थैंक यू सो मच प्लीज कंटिन्यू योर स्वधर्म आफ्टर नाइन ओ क्लॉक यू हैव टू गो बैक टू वर्क यू आर नॉट वर्किंग आल्सो इफ यू आर इन अ फैमिली प्लीज स्पेंड टाइम विद योर फैमिली एंड प्लीज स्टडी एवरी डे वन वन आवर एटलीस्ट फॉर ऑल प्रोफेशन स्टडिंग इज इंपॉर्टेंट वी डोंट हैव हॉलीडे लाइक सैटरडे संडे विदाउट स्टडी ओके स्टडी एंजॉय वॉच आईपीएल ऑल्सो Okay thank you sir thank you i'll just wind up with a prayer om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om
as we say in sanskrit shubha dinam have a great day ahead and a great week ahead dhanyavadah shigram punar milamah we'll meet soon yeah thank you thank you sir thank you sir